How's it going? Pretty great. Just painting some purple boxes. Brand new hive. What's the name of this hive going to be? What is it? <laughs> Amethyst. <laughs> didn't want to answer? I didn't know if it was going to be a joke or not. Oh, no. It was amethyst. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Excited about spring? Yeah, it's going to be a good spring, I think. We've got uh, swarm traps built, ready to go out in case we mess up on our splits and they still swarm so we can catch them and hopefully put them back where they belong. We've got some splits planned. We're going to get we're going to get topaz back. We're going to get jade back. We're going to expand into amethyst. And then we'll have six hives that will be working. And so should be good. And millions and millions of pounds of honey. Well, I'm certainly hoping so, but we got to catch up on foundation. They buried a lot of the wax off of our frames, so we got to get some foundation going. So that might be the goal, and whatever honey we get is what we get. That bear really was devastating. <laughs> We're still still trying to recover. It's having trauma, nightmares about bears. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Bottom board. It's the very bottom of the hive. How come it doesn't have a screen on it? Uh, it's a solid bottom board. Not the screen bottom, bottom board, so this one doesn't do any of the Varroa mite functions or the small hive beetle functions that this, the screen bottom board does, but it's also uh, uh, more insulate, insulative, so I guess, so it keeps the bees a little warmer. I'm just trying to figure out which side I want to paint, there's two sides, there's the 3 8 side, which is the bee space side, it's only 3 8 inches tall, or if I want to do the taller side. I think with the entrance reducer, you have to do the bigger side. Right. Up. You do have to do the bigger side, but the question is, is do we want to use entrance reducers anymore? Yeah. I had no plans of taking them out. No? You want to leave them in? Well, I mean, out of our program, not like... Oh. Okay. So then I will paint with the big side up. It's do you really know? just the sides that I have to do, and the lips and things you know yeah do you know what um have we decided yet what our split program is going to be well i think we're just going to try walk away splits again this year right yeah you know i think that's going to be the easiest um because we want to we want to increase the number of hives that we have from three to six and that's the simplest method to do it does take a little bit of extra time um, away from honey production, which I'm sorry to all of our customers. <laughs> um, I hope we still have, you know, a ton of honey to give you. Um, so we'll have to see. That's pretty. We'll have to see how it goes. Cool. That's all we're doing. Hello, all you happy people. And welcome to Fernsby. We are going to be doing a lot of activities that are all connected but varied right now. So first up we're in the elderberry field and we are going to be planting all of our um, companion plants for the elderberries. We have a clover mix specifically designed for bees. So this is going to um, collect the nitrogen in the air, put it where the elderberries can reach it, and then it's going to feed our bees once they start flowering. We also have some creeping thyme that's going to be another bee forage that's going to help with soil erosion and keeping things all neat and tidy. Yeah, it's like a cover crop. Yes, um, for the elderberry field. And then we also brought some dandelion seeds that we've been collecting to help break up the compact soil. And dandelions are a calcium um, gatherer. So that's going to be an additional bonus and it's a great bee forage great bee as well. Forage, yep. So that's what we're doing with the seeds in the elderberry field. We have then brought a bunch of black oil sunflower seeds which will be spreading up on the hill 
to help cover all that bare ground that we opened up during the land clearing. And when we get to the bee yard today, do you want to tell them what's going on? Uh, yeah, so we've got a couple things going on in the bee yard. It's a little cool. The bees are not out flying, so I don't think we're going to mess too much within the hive. We were hoping to switch some boxes around, push the push the queen down a little bit more into if the bottom needed. of the hive if needed. But I don't think we're going to do that today. What we're going to do is we're going to feed. We're going to give them the one-to-one -one syrup that we do in every spring that you've seen us do before. Helps get the queen laying even more. Um, and it also gives uh, the uh, workers enough energy to start drawing out wax. We need to build up our wax again. So we're hoping to get that, get that going. <clears throat> in preparation for all the splits that we're going to do yep. in a month, two months-ish? Maybe, yeah. And then we've got swarm traps to put up. We're going to show you how we're putting up the swarm traps um, and uh, what we've made them out of. I think I've, we think we did a little video on how I made them, didn't we? Yeah. Okay. And I've then, got some footage of that. Okay. And then uh, we'll put the swarm traps up and that should do it for today. Yep. So a lot of activities and come along. We'll and, have some fun. Yep. All right. So here we are at the at the base of the hill and I wanted to show you Brittany and Dylan are spreading the black sunflower seeds up on the on the ridge of the hill here right but a couple weeks ago we broadcast cow peas and look cow pea sprouts these also are nitrogen fixers so they're gonna bring the nitrogen out of the air and the nitrogen that's deep in the soil bring it up to the surface where the beneficial plants can use them. Now, we didn't get a chance to plant elderberries here right now, but eventually we're going to take cuttings from the established plants that we're getting, you know, that are growing now, and they're going to cover the hillside here. And by that point, this will be full and rich with nitrogen because of the job the cow peas are doing. Plus, Connor is going to start spreading um, some some of the clover seeds right here on the hillside. So go for it, Connor. I'm gonna start here. Yep. There's a frog right there, just a tiny little itty bitty one. You can barely see it. Right there, it's a little frog. I'll get to try and see if I can make him jump, so you can see him. Oh, there he went. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but there there he went. Now, oh. hey Dilly. Just, I was just looking at the frog. There he is, there he's jumping. Anyway, that's kind of cool. A little aquatic little frog here. So, here's our creek from a different angle. You've never seen this side of the creek before. Property line's like right there. <coughs> and um, we've got a bunch of debris piled up right here that's backed up the, the creek right there. Now, this is a natural check dam and we plan in our plan to build a couple of check dams with um, gabions you know, they're stone filled cages they're cages full of stone that we plan to put across here and basically what it does is catches debris as it flows downhill and it flows down the creek and makes um, unique habitat for things like little frogs right and then it also um, brings and catches nutrient uh, from upstream that can be used on our property. So it's a long-term, slow solution to the devastating soil erosion that's happened in the Ozarks for thousands and thousands of years that's left us with this rocky, 
no soil, dirt, and clay. And eventually, our property, within the next 20, 30 years, will be a rich oasis of non-eroding, rich, fertile soil um, that will be a testament to the uh, principles of permaculture and the efforts of our family.